Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherall and I am a fourth generation witch. Today, at last, I'm back with my ever popular Almanac series looking at what witchcraft you can do and when throughout the month of December. So as always with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that are happening throughout the month of December, and then we look at the nitty gritty day to day detail at what witchcraft and when. So with that said, let's get on to the overview. December is the month of midwinter. The Anglo-Saxons called the month of December Yule Monoth the month of Yule because of course it is. This is the oldest festival known to humanity, this and the summer solstice, and we have been celebrating them for as long as we have been man. This is a fire festival and this is reflected actually throughout the month of December. There are so many different applications for the use of fire and if you don't do anything with your witchcraft just light a candle every single day as this celebrates bringing the light into the darkest months of winter. I don't really know why our ancient ancestors celebrated the month of midwinter with this great three or twelve day feast depending on your custom. I mean there is a sense to be said that it is the time when you should eat meat because the stock have been killed and salted and it won't last that long so they sort of feasted whilst they could. Your resources are quite scarce at this time, you know, you've got to eke them out through the lean months of the following spring. December is the time to bring the greenery into the house, representing the rebirth of the sun at midwinter. The earth is in a slumber at the moment, bringing greenery in to decorate your house does bring great cheer as we look towards the coming months of spring. The energetic feel of December is quite muted. The world is dormant in the sleep. And as a result, I do enjoy the quietness of the world. You can often go out in the evenings and it's just still and silent. It is quite joyous in a way. Mm. Nice month, December. And finally, for December, one of the great things that runs through December is the kindness to children. You know, we have St Nicholas, Father Christmas, all bringing presents to our little ones. We also have Childermas, which I will go into later, the Holy Innocence Day. And there is a trend at Christmas that you should look towards your younglings. Having said that, there is not much of an overview on December because the world is dormant. But there is so much to be done on each individual day. So let's go straight in to what witchcraft you can do on what day. As with all these videos, we are going to start with the first of December, which is the start of meteorological, the start of the meteorological winter. Yet I'm not even going to try again because it's just not coming out of my mouth, is it? This just means it's winter. The next three months are classified as the coldest of the year. And yes, they are. It is a bit chilly. So what do we do in winter? We light our fires. It was known, you know, the 1st of December, you were allowed to start heating your home. I mean, I lived in a bloody freezing house, but I seem to remember that in December, the central heating came on and I was quite pleased. So that was always a joy at this time of year. The 6th of December is St Nicholas's Day, which is the day that um, the northern Scandinavian countries leave their toys in shoes for their children outside their bedroom doors. I'm not too au fait with the actual customs of St Nicholas. What I do know is that this is a child-centric day. We will be looking towards our children on this day, which, as I said in the beginning, is a great trend that runs throughout December. And it starts early on in the month on the 6th. St Nicholas, often people say, is the forebear of Father Christmas. Well, maybe he is, maybe he isn't, because the pagan ancestors did have their own form of Father Christmas who came at midwinter. The next date I want to look at is the 12th of December, which is, of course, the night of the new moon. 
Astrologers believe that each new moon has its own energy depending on the star sign that is in and this new moon is in Sagittarius which is a very optimistic and trustful sign. So this is a great time to make plans for your future travel. So plan your summer holiday today. Great time for it and also to release the bonds that are holding you back in your life. So take stock of what you think you can do without and get rid of it. The 12th of December, for some reason, and I can't find out why, but this is the time that you should cut your greenery to decorate your houses. However, there's a couple of rules about this. One, do not use any iron, hence why the druids used to have those gold and silver sickles. Don't use any iron when cutting your greenery down. Two, don't let it touch the floor. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because it magically leaches the energy into the earth as opposed to holding it in the branches. And number three, you're not allowed to bring it actually into your house on that day. You just store it near your house or hang it up outside because you can't bring in the greenery, as so they say, until midwinter or Yule because this will bring you bad luck. Mistletoe, of course, that grows on oak trees is the one that is really considered the sort of greatest of all mistletoes. However, mistletoe that grows on apple trees and hawthorn trees also has special meaning. It is a plant of fertility and an aphrodisiac. So the tradition of kissing under the mistletoe means that you must take a berry, one of the white berries, from the mistletoe every time you kiss. And when all the berries have been used, the mistletoe has lost its power. The 12th of December is also St Finian's night. Now, this is a night where you must go to bed having had a full supper. If you don't eat your supper tonight, then you are likely to be carried over the threshold by the fairies. So kids, make sure you eat those greens. 13th of December is the peak of the Geminids meteor showers. The Geminids meteor showers are one of the most spectacular throughout the year. The moon is quite dark at the moment so there's no glare coming off it to detract from the beauty of them. These are multi-coloured fireworks. They often break off into lots of different filaments as they fly. Well worth a look. And what do you do when you see a shooting star? Well of course you make a wish. So tonight you can make your wishes. And do please let me remind you about wish magic, that wish magic is inherently selfish. Do not wish for other people, only ever wish for yourself. Mm, sounds good, doesn't it? The 13th of December is the day when Mercury goes retrograde, meaning it looks like it moves backwards along its orbit. This is a day when tempers will flare, communications break down, and if something is going to go wrong, it will. Mercury retrograde makes us all a bit crabby. Don't sign any contracts. Don't make any life-changing decisions this day or, or until it's finished its retrograde motion, which is on the 1st of January next year. So just beware. The 16th of December is the beginning of the mince pie season. Now, for our American friends who don't know what mince pies are, they are these delicious, sweet sultana and nut and currants and all sorts of lovely dried fruit pies. Thoroughly recommend you go and buy them. They're very sweet, delicious. They're not made with beef or things like that. There is a thought that you should eat 12 mince pies in December in order to bring you luck for every month of the year. And today, the 16th of December, is the day that you start that. The 20th of December is the day that the ghosts start to walk and they walk from now until just after Christmas. So, should you wish to see the ghosts walking, go outside and have a look. It's also a day that's great for divination, as all ghost walking days are, because the spirits of the dead can tell you that of the future. So if you would like to read your tarot cards or have a look in your crystal ball, do so today. The next big date of the year is the 22nd of December and this of course is Yule, the winter solstice. Now I'm not going to tell you very much about Yule in this video because of course I will do my own dedicated video towards Yule next week so look out for that then. And if I'm very clever I'll try and remember when I've got it out to put it up here for you that I might forget so if it's not there oh dear.
Yule, of course, is where we have the joyous thought that we now have lengthening days for six months ahead of us. And if lighting up the darkness wasn't so important to us as a human species, then we wouldn't have been doing it for so long. Stonehenge is the big cathedral to the winter solstice. It was most likely built for the winter solstice because the sun sets directly between the two main trilithons, I think they're called, the two main stones. We have been doing this for a long time. It is the day, of course, when you would light your Yule candle. Yule candles should be red because red is a very energetic and strongly forward motion colour that pulls us out of the depths of midwinter. The 22nd of December is also the day when the sun moves into Capricorn, which is my own star sign. Hello, my time of year. It makes me laugh. I was looking at the old astrologers' thoughts about Capricorn men and women, and they seem to be rather sexually prolific. I have many partners and many children. They're also quite irascible and angry. I couldn't really find anything very wonderful about them, apart from our loyalty and kindness, which, to be fair, is not a bad characteristic to have. The 24th of December, of course, we all know as Christmas Eve. However, there's a great tradition amongst the Christians. At midnight on Christmas Eve, the little animals kneel down in the stable with tears running down their furry faces in praise of the Christ child. That it's also considered that they have the ability to talk. Now, only for an hour or so, and it is an old, old tradition, this far older than the Christian. However, the talking of the beasts cannot be spied upon by the humans. You know, if you go out and look for it, they're not going to do it. And also, it's really bad luck. You can only catch them by chance. So don't go and look for the animals talking. This leads me on nicely to the 25th of December, which we all know as Christmas Day. Now, Christmas Day, it's got elves, it's got angels, it's got flying reindeer, it's got mysterious people coming down the chimney, it's got um, symbolic fires, animals talking. If this is not a pagan festival takeover, then, well... I'm no witch. I have got a video about how Christmas is so big and if you'd like to have a look at that I'll put it up here for you. Christmas Day has long been held as a day of divination as well and here are a couple of folklore weather divinations for you. A clear night on Christmas Eve will mean that you will have good crops in the summer. Snow on Christmas Day means that Easter will be green. And finally, the nearer the new moon is to Christmas Day, the harder the winter. The 26th of December is known as Boxing Day. Now, for those of you who don't know what Boxing Day is, it's simply a day when we boxed up presents for the postman and the milkman and, you know, those who came and delivered to our house on a regular basis. And that's got nothing to do with what I want to talk about, which is also, it is the Day of the Wren. Now, Christmas is defined by the robin, is it not? The beautiful robin redbreast. But the robin and the wren are both very, very closely correlated and tied in together. The wren is one of the birds that sings throughout December, as is the robin. It is also known as the king of the birds. It was heavily venerated by the Celtic nations, and it was known to be the symbol of the Druids. There are many stories about how its courage and its intelligence and its wit have overcome many obstacles in helping humanity, such as bringing fire to humans in the first place. There is a lot of places in the world, especially in northern France, the Isle of Man and Ireland, where they know this day as the hunting of the Wren Day, whereupon boys would go out and with a dead wren on a stick, in times past, now I'm happy to say it's a, you know, a puppet of a wren on a stick. They would go and bang on the doors of houses around the neighbourhood. They would ask for a penny in exchange for a feather. And the feather was extremely good luck. And you definitely wanted one. And in fact, most of the Scandinavian countries think of the wren as the winter king. It is very much part and parcel of a North European culture. They're absolutely charming, these animals. They tend to be very, very territorial in the summer and they go around, you know, discarding anybody from encroaching on their territory. But in winter, sweetly, they very much pause all hostilities. And a wren, if it finds a particularly cosy place to hang out, will go around calling all the other wrens 
they're all huddled together in this cosy nook. And then you've got sort of 60 wrens have been found in one of those little bird nesting boxes. So utterly charming. I think it's one of my favourite birds, the wren. They're just cheerful. They just cheer you up and make you feel happy. The 27th of December is the night of the full moon. This is known as the moon after Yule by the Anglo-Saxons or the oak moon and cold moon. The oak moon, of course, is because it is the time of the rise of the oak king. Now, the 27th of December is a day when you shouldn't eat chocolate. I got the information from this book, uh, Folklore of whatever it is, an almanac folklore. Now, I think it's because chocolate is very heating of the blood. It was considered by the Mexicans and the Aztecs to be a fertility and virility drug. And of course it is. So on the 27th, two days after the Christian Christmas, you shouldn't continue to eat chocolate because you've had enough and it might make you oversexed. The 28th of December is known as the unluckiest day of the year and this is simply because it is the anniversary of the death of the innocents by King Herod where he tried to kill all those male children under two in his province in order to prevent the birth of the Christ child. It's Holy Innocence Day and it is a day recommended that again you should be kind to your children. To be fair, they're probably driving you up the wall today because you've had them for whole of Christmas and now they're getting stir crazy. So I can understand why people might be a bit cross by now with them. So remember, patience is a virtue. And finally, we come to the 31st of December. There is a heap of fire festivals happening on this day. The Allendale Fire Festival. The Flambeau Fire Festival in Tayside. And the one in Grampian, the Swinging the Fireballs Festival. I suspect that these are all sort of solstice festivals that have got moved forward into the new year because we like to celebrate the new year with light. You know, previous to our modern day times, these would have been carried out throughout the month of December and around the solstice period. It is a mark of our culture that we do like to light the darkness with a candle. And so therefore, let me remind you to light up the 31st of December with a red candle for luck. Do let me know in the comments below what your favourite tradition is. I really enjoy reading them and I'll try and respond to as many as possible. Otherwise, my Patreon coven meeting is coming up. New applicants are always welcome. It's not scary. I am the person doing pretty much 100% of the talking, mostly. Mostly. So do come. I promise you, you'll have so much fun. And as someone once said, I have learnt more from this meeting than I have done in the past 12 years. So I do recommend it. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel. And I hope you have an incredibly happy Yule. So I will see you in the very near future. Bye.